Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the Bricks. Now, the German government's shameful and cowardly cover-up of the culprits behind the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines continues. Now, let's recall, on the night of the 26th of September 2022, explosions occurred on the pipelines of the Nord Stream. Three of the four pipelines were badly damaged. The explosions occurred in the Danish exclusive economic zone southeast of the island of Bornholm. Huge gas leaks from both the Nord Stream uh, pipeline branches were recorded in also northeast of Bornholm. Now, the German government is refusing to make public and publish the interim conclusions of their investigations into the Nord Stream explosions. And this is stated in the German government's answer to the AFD uh, Bundestag deputy Sir Stefan Kotre. It was seen by the newspaper of Vestia, of which I have obtained the copy. Now, the document admits that on the eve of the terrorist attacks, the German authorities did not provide any security measures for the protection of these gas pipelines. At the same time, Berlin does not rule out any version of events and cannot name a specific suspect or reason for the sabotage due to a lack of irrefutable evidence. I mean, what the heck do these clowns want? A sight confession? A smoking gun? I mean, at the same time, the German authorities continue to refuse to cooperate with Russia on the issue or even allow them to examine the site of the sabotage or even share any information with them. Now, the FD member, uh, Stefan Kotra, told Investia that the government was obviously hiding many of the facts, in particular, who was actually behind the terrorist attacks, which was the largest act of industrial sabotage in history. I mean, back in 2024, a group of uh, members of the Bundestag from the AFD asked the German government about the progress of their investigation into the explosions of the Nord Stream and Nord Stream 2 gas pipelines. Now, these opposition MPs received their answer from the German government on the 17th of July. In a 27-page report that's been seen by Esvestia, the authorities answered around 100 questions. Now, some were left blank and not commented on due to the so-called sensitivity of the information. And that ranged from cooperation with the US government to the reasons why the search for the culprits has taken so long. Now, the German government in particular has made it clear it did not intend to release any details about the progress or lack of it in their investigation, he said. Neither the federal government nor the federal prosecutor's office have considered the possibility of publishing or making available preliminary or interim results of the investigation. They said, at the same time, that would jeopardise the purpose of the investigation, said the German authorities. Yeah, I mean, if you want to cover up, you don't want to leak anything now, do you? I mean, at the same time, the authorities noted that the federal government did not provide any further comment uh, about the explosions. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video and making a small donation. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, so thank you for even thinking about it. Now, the sabotage by explosions of the three pipelines, uh, two Nord Stream pipelines and one of Nord Stream 2, occurred on the night of the uh, 22nd of September. Now, on October the 10th, the German Federal Prosecutor's Office opened an investigation into the incident. Denmark and Sweden also launched their investigations in the same time. Now, do bear in mind, these pipelines were at a depth of 100 metres. Yeah, 100 metres, at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, and they were made of concrete reinforced steel, so they're not easy to damage or destroy, unlike, for example, a, a cable, an internet or telephone cable. Berlin has stated in the report, did not involve any foreign experts in attempting to establish the fact, but at the same time is actively cooperating internationally in the investigation. However, the Germans refused to disclose any details of exactly who is involved and from where. So, your guess is as good as mine. Is it Inspector Clouseau, Sherlock Holmes, the Keystone Cops? 
you know, uh, Miss Marple even, you know, uh, Agatha Christie's finest, Poirot, you never know. I mean, the Federal Prosecutor's Office and the Criminal Police Office of Germany are providing legal assistance in investigation of the sabotage and exchanging information with various law enforcement agencies at a number of countries. They don't actually name them, otherwise the investigating authorities do not comment on the question of international judicial cooperation. Now, a few months ago, the Danish police said they'd closed their investigation into the explosions at the Nord Stream and Nord Stream 2 gas pipe because they basically didn't have any information that they could open a criminal case about. Sweden also followed suit. I mean, their authorities concluded that there was no one to prosecute. There's no evidence of anybody uh, was involved, said the, their Prime Minister, Ulf Christensen. Of course, it's another move along. Nothing to see here. Biggest industrial sabotage in history and it's treated with less seriousness than a minor traffic collision. I mean, the fact that some countries have completed their investigation has been called absurd by Russia, which of course it is. I mean, let's be honest. Everybody knows the USA did it with some help from the UK and Norway Special Forces, and they did it under the cover of a NATO exercise in the Baltic Sea. However, the Germans, the Danes and the Swedes are afraid to admit it. And I mean, on the one hand, there's the recognition that there was deliberate sabotage, but on the other hand, there's, oh, it's the three wise monkeys, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I mean, the presidential press secretary, Dmitry Pesco, assessing the, the Danish law enforcement agency. He says, we've repeatedly called for an international investigation involving some Russian experts, but we've had no positive response to this ish initiative from Berlin, Copenhagen uh, or Stockholm. They've been silent for six months like a fish on ice. So neither the Swedes have responded to our official letters from our Prime Minister in Mishustin, who's very politely asked for a named person who would be possible to hold a conversation about what happened. Since it I mean, involved the exclusive zones of Sweden and Denmark, and it was a property of a Russian company, I mean, Lavrov said, you know, why won't they talk to us about this? What are they afraid of? I mean, it's obvious that Germany has not changed its position on the, the issue. I mean, despite Russia continuing to talk to them, they just reject all proposals for an international investigation into the attacks on Russia's largest energy facility, says the Russian ambassador to uh, Germany, Sergei Nechahov. I mean, the German government responding to a question from the uh, AFD complained that the investigation was being hampered by a lack of clear suspects. I mean, they said, achieving rapid success in investigations is only possible if the perpetrators are caught in the act. There's reliable and credible confessions are given, or irrefutable evidence is found in some other way. That is the not the case here, said the German authorities. I mean, the government's reported the German federal prosecutor doesn't see any point in even offering a reward for information that could help the investigation. Well, I'll take the money. I can tell them who did it. I mean, according to the government report, the German authorities are considering all possible versions of what could have occurred. Yeah. What else could have happened apart from somebody blowing up the pipeline? Now, there's been a story put out by the CIA that a Ukrainian sailboat did it. Now, that's too absurd to be taken seriously, as there's no way four people in a sailboat could dive down 100 metres. It's simply not possible. Scuba divers can operate at a maximum depth of 30 metres, and they couldn't blow up Nord Stream. It's just not going to happen. To do that, you need specialist equipment and high explosives, and only a military-trained team would have that capability and the explosives. Now, the German prosecutor's office is investigating all the main reasons for the acts of sabotage that make sense from a forensic point of view. They said, for this reason, neither the federal prosecutor's office nor the federal government have any reason to rule out certain circumstances or motives until the crime uh, has been fully investigated and completed. Now, based on the answers received by the AFD, the government assumes, among other things, that the sabotage could have been carried out by the Russians. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> how absurd is that? So that the, their reasoning is, so the blame would fall on the Americans uh, or the Ukrainians and uh, 
then Russia would have deflected blame away from itself. I mean, I don't understand why they would do that. I mean, it's obvious that the German government's main goal is to divert attention from the real perpetrators. I mean, the version with the yacht Andromeda is just to divert public opinion away from the actual main suspects, which obviously are the uh, Norwegians, uh, Norwegians, British and Americans. I mean, according to the AFD, the German government behaviour actually rules out um, anybody being blamed for it at all. And nobody actually been able to, uh, to claim responsibility. I mean, the Germans know that the Russians were not responsible, says Stefan Kotry, the AFD uh, member. I mean, Germany's hiding a lot of facts. I mean, according to Seymour Hersh, who's the famous U.S. general, the U.S. government is behind him. Well, he obviously agrees with me. He claims that the Biden administration blew up the pipelines, but it had nothing to do with victory in the Ukraine, the conflict. It was all about gas. The U.S. wants to uh, sell its LNG to, um, to Germany and to Europe, and blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline made uh, the gas supply uh, to Germany uh, much easier for them because the Russian main delivery points of uh, Yamal, Europe and Nord Stream are now out of action. So that's basically uh, their particular way of doing it. I mean, the Russians have always said that the US intelligence services were obviously involved in it. You know, I mean, anybody who's always that. I mean, I don't want to go into details, but in, in such cases, they always say, look for someone who benefits, cue bono. You don't have to, you have to look for someone who's benefit or benefits. It's obvious who benefits, but there are many are interested. Anyway, I mean, but it's not everybody, according to Vladimir Putin, who can get to the bottom of the bottom of the sea and carry out this explosion. So I, I, I'm with Putin on that one. I mean, it's worth noting that before the sabotage, Biden had said that the Nord Stream 2 would not work if Russia invaded the, the Ukraine in its special military operation. And then Karine Jean-Pierre, you know, uh, the, the woman who makes uh, ridiculous and absurdity a daily occurrence, was Biden didn't talk about destroying the pipeline. He just simply meant it wouldn't be put into operation. And the German government... Uh, refuses to give any uh, information and it's got no plans for the US to send divers to the site of the explosion even though the US had said that they wanted to do it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, Sherlock Holmes is not involved in finding out what happened so it's unlikely that this mystery, or if it's you think it's a mystery, is ever going to be solved. I mean, the media will continue to treat people as idiots as they continue to push the official narrative that they don't know who did it or why. I mean, come on. let's not be Sherlock Holmes about it. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Please click on the thanks button and donate. And please use the comments. Always love your comments. Okay, so I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.